March 8, 1868. Madame kept me to have tea with three young friends of hers. Three sisters, I think. The two youngest are extremely pretty, the dark one as pretty as the blonde. Their fresh faces, radiant with the bloom of youth, were a perpetual delight to the eye. This electric force of beauty has a beneficent effect upon the man of letters. It acts as a real restorative. Sensitive, impressionable, absorbent as I am, the neighborhood of health, of beauty, of intelligence and of goodness exercises a powerful influence upon my whole being. And in the same way, I am troubled and affected just as easily by the presence near me of troubled lives or diseased souls. Madame said to me that I must be superlatively feminine in all my perceptions. This ready sympathy and sensitiveness is the reason of it. If I had but desired it ever so little, I should have had the magical clairvoyance of the somnambulist and could have reproduced in myself a number of strange phenomena. I know it, but I have always been on my guard against it, whether from indifference or from prudence. When I think of the intuitions of every kind which have come to me since my youth, it seems to me that I have lived a multitude of lives. Every characteristic individuality shapes itself ideally in me, or rather, moulds me for the moment into its own image, and I have only to turn my attention upon myself at such a time to be able to understand a new mode of being, a new phase of human nature. In this way I have been, turn by turn, mathematician, musician, savant, monk, child or mother. In these states of universal sympathy I have even seemed to myself sometimes to enter into the condition of the animal or the plant, and even of an individual animal, of a given plant. This faculty of ascending and descending metamorphosis, this power of simplifying or of adding to one's individuality, had sometimes astounded my friends, even the most subtle of them. It has to do no doubt with the extreme facility which I have for impersonal and objective thought, and this again accounts for the difficulty which I feel in realizing my own individuality in being simply one man having his proper number and ticket. To withdraw within my own individual limits has always seemed to me a strange, arbitrary and conventional process. I seem to myself to be a mere conjurer's apparatus, an instrument of vision and perception, a person without personality, a subject without any determined individuality, an instance, to speak technically, of pure determinability and formability, and therefore I can only resign myself with difficulty to play the pure, arbitrary part of a private citizen inscribed upon the roll of a particular town or a particular country. In action, I feel myself out of place. My true milieu is contemplation, pure virtuality and perfect equilibrium in these I am most at home. There I feel myself free, disinterested and sovereign. Is it a call or temptation? It represents perhaps the oscillation between the two geniuses, the Greek and the Roman, the Eastern and the Western, the Ancient and the Christian, or the struggle between the two ideals, that of liberty and that of holiness. Liberty raises us to the gods. Holiness prostrates us on the ground. Action limits us, whereas in the state of contemplation we are endlessly expansive. Will localizes us, thought universalizes us. My soul wavers between half a dozen antagonistic general conceptions because it is responsive to all the great instincts of human nature and its aspiration is to the absolute which is only to be reached through a succession of contraries. It has taken me a great deal of time to understand myself, and I frequently find myself beginning over again the study of the oft-solved problem. So difficult is it for us to maintain any fixed point within us. I love everything, 
and detest one thing only, the hopeless imprisonment of my being within a single, arbitrary form, even were it chosen by myself. Liberty for the inner man is then the strongest of my passions. Perhaps my only passion. Is such a passion lawful? It has been my habit to think so, but interminently, by fits and starts. I'm not perfectly sure of it.